All right, folks. So what I wanted to do is a review of the BTEC DMR 6X2 digital and analog ham handheld radio. Uh, I've had this radio for about five months, close to six months, and what I wanted to do is just kind of give an update and some of my impressions on it. So let's just go ahead and get started. Uh, I purchased this radio for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first being that it's front panel programmable. And uh, we've done some videos on that. Uh, I will roll in some footage as we talk through uh, myself doing some various tasks. But you can add uh, digital repeaters, you can add analog repeaters, you can add contacts, uh, you can add talk groups, all from the front panel, which makes this uh, radio a joy to use. It is a dual band uh, radio, as I mentioned. It operates on the 2 meter and 70 centimeter bands. Um, it claims to be water resistant or splash resistant. I didn't test that, uh, so there's, <laughs> there's no video of that. Um, I didn't want to risk anything happening to it. It does come with a GPS, but the use of the GPS is fairly limited, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. It has a large user um, ID database, and I believe there's around 120,000 uh, users worldwide right now, so there's some room to spare, but that, that uh, list keeps growing and growing and growing, and uh, will soon be out of capacity or exceeding 150,000. Uh, it supports many channels, 4,000, which is enough to program in uh, one talk group on every repeater that is a digital repeater in North America, I believe. And it uh, ships with some extras like a programming cable and an extra battery, um, and that's nice to have. I did, uh, in one of my other videos about the radio, talk about some of the cons. Uh, the, the CPS, or the software used to program the radio, only runs on Windows. There's no Mac or Linux alternative, which is a little bit of a bummer for me. Uh, you can't program it with uh, easy-to-use software like Chirp. The CPS that comes with this radio is fairly limited, and uh, we'll cover that in a little bit. Um, it has a direct conversion receiver, which may or may not be a big deal. Uh, Super Heterodyne, I think, works a little bit better for these types of radios. Um, in some of the, the less expensive, now granted, this radio is about $179. Um, you, you see the direct conversion receivers. Receivers. Um, limited reviews and limited community support. This is one of the things I wanted to talk about. Um, there's just not a lot of info out on the internet regarding this radio, and uh, that's a little bit of a bummer too. At the time of this video, um, there are 12 videos posted to YouTube uh, on this particular radio, and 10 of them are mine. Um, so it's not that I'm a trendsetter or anything. It's just I don't believe this radio has hit seen the popularity that uh, that it should. Uh, it's important to mention that the radio is a rebranded Anytone, um, what is it, the, the 628, 628 I believe is what it is. Um, anyhow, um, that's a really popular radio. And what's funny is, is that I'll be talking on DMR talk groups and I'll mention that I have a BTEC and people are like, oh, those Balfang, uh, those Balfang DMR radios are horrible. Uh, you know, you have any problems with it? You know, I try to explain that it is in fact an Anytone radio that just has a, a BTEC uh, sticker on it and a little bit different firmware, and uh, people act like I'm making it up, but uh, that, is the, that is the reality of it. So I do think that because this is branded as BTEC, it has actually hurt the, uh, the radio in the community. So one of the things that um, people ask is, say, hey, can I go get a DMR radio? What's it going to be like? And, I, you know, you need uh, some assumptions need to be made there um, if you recommend DMR to anybody. Um, Generally speaking, there's always going to be somebody who uh, is an Einstein and can pick up anything and, and understand how it works. But uh, you need to have a pretty good understanding of amateur radio. And that's not just um, the technology, but it's also the protocols on how you talk to people, how you join nets, uh, using your call sign, things like that. Um, but you also need to understand you know, how uh, repeaters work, for example, and you need to understand how you make configuration changes on a radio. Um, you need an understanding of DMR. Uh, there's a lot of information around what DMR is specifically, but every radio's interpretation of how you apply DMR settings generally is done through their computer software, which is a little bit different for each radio. There's no real standard. Um, so you do need to know how DMR works. And uh, you're going to need to have a PC for programming. I did say that this is front panel programmable, but uh, if you are going to program a large number of repeaters, and you do want to do things like import the user ID database, you're going to need a PC for that. And people say, well, hey, why would I want to import the, uh, the user database? And the reason I import the user database is that when I am communicating with anybody, like say I'm listening to TAC310, which is a very popular talk group, anytime somebody keys up the radio, I see their name, I see their location, I see their call sign, and uh, that's handy. It's a, it's a great feature. 
So that way, when you know if somebody comes on and say, "Hey, I need a signal report," you know, I can get on there and say, "Hey, Larry, uh, you know, this is this is the smoking ape, and I heard you. Um, here's your re signal report." And it just kind of kind of makes it a little bit more uh, feel like a smaller, uh, maybe like a chat you're having on your local repeater or something like that. So, um, in the course of having this radio, I've done a few routine activities. <laughs> I've uh, set the uh, time and date, the time zone and date on it more than once because uh, you have to do um, firmware updates from time to time and they require you to redo that. Um, you know, save the initial configuration, you read from the radio, so that way you always have a good good copy of a blank code plug in case you need to upload it. I have upgraded firmware. In the five months or so that I've uh, uh, owned this radio, I've upgraded the firmware three times. So that's four different versions of the firmware and they made a lot of changes. And that's pretty typical, it seems, of DMR radios as they're released on the market. Um, when they first come out, lots of changes come out fast, um, which is good, right? So it shows the commitment of the company um, to make sure that they're, they're fixing any bugs, any defects, um, and taking uh, feedback from the community. Uh, one thing that was a little bit of a pain, right? There was a, there was a point where I think uh, two co-plugs came out three weeks apart or something like that. Um, so you spend some time doing that. Uh, we also have done some videos. And... Um, you know, programming or importing talk um, zones. Uh, zones are kind of like uh, banks or what they would be called, um, <clears throat> kind of like an analog radio. So, like, I have a zone on my radio, for example, called Home, and that has my home hotspot and p repeaters around my house. And then I have a zone called Work, and that has repeaters that are closer to where I work. And so I can switch between zones. I can scan. I can get on a repeater or, or talk to somebody. Um, talk groups are also called priority contacts on some radios, but this is when you want to make a group call. So it's kind of like a chat room or a reflector in D Star. Um, contacts where you import some contacts, and then and then uh, channels. When you program a channel, your channel has a couple different elements. It has a color code. It has a time slot. Um, I'm not going to get too much into how DMR works, but really it's a it's a two time slot system. So when you when you put a channel in, you need to have well, ultimately, you need to have a frequency. You need to have a time slot. You need to have a color code. Um, and you need to have a t you need to have a talk group, and then you add all of that information to a zone. Um, and then you know, also playing around with this, um, I do have a cable that works with a regular Balfang DM not DMR Balfang UV5R. Um, and what it is is kind of like a uh, headphone jack converter into my Android tablet, and I was able to use this radio to run APRS um, using APRS Droid on my tablet. And uh, that worked out pretty well for me. Um, really happy with the radio. I use it every day and have for, like I said, around five months. Um, it's, it's really been a joy to own. Um, I did do some testing, and uh, maybe I'll cut in some footage here, of um, antenna matching. So with some DMR radios that are on the market, uh, there were some questions around impedance mismatches and things like that. And um, I switched. I don't use the stock antenna that came with it. Uh, if I'm outside and I need to maybe get kind of far away, I use a signal stick, uh, which is a fantastic uh, uh, BNC connected uh, antenna. And then I also have a diamond, I think it's like a 1200 or something like that, a really stubby little antenna that I use um, on the radio when I'm in the house, because I most of the time use this radio to connect to my DMR hotspot. Um, and I do do some range testing on it. Uh, one thing, and it, it comes up later in the, in the video, the receive on two meter is a little bit weak. It's, it's not as sensitive as, as I would like it to be. So, for example, if I have a repeater that's 30 miles from my home location, I fire this up and I fire up my um, Yaesu FT60R. The Yaesu is going to sound much better than this radio is um, on two meters. So that was uh, a little bit of a disappointment, but it's a you know <clears throat> it's a trade off that I'm that I'm willing to make. So you know the good uh, things that I really liked about it. You know, I talked earlier about the extras that it came with. Um, the form factor; it's a smaller radio, fits in your hand, fantastic. It's lightweight, it's easy to carry. Uh, it makes for a good EDC radio. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about you can you can program from the front keyboard, and uh, that that's really handy. There were no driver issues. I just plugged this in to a Windows 10 laptop, and everything worked. Um, you know, some of the other <laughs> some other radios that are out there, you constantly hear people talk about phony cables, prolific drivers. Um, I just plugged it in and it worked, and it, that, that was a nice user experience. <clears throat> the battery life seems to be pretty nice. It comes with two batteries. One's an extended battery. Um, I can use this thing for about three days uh, at a few hours. Um, you know, probably turn it on 
uh, maybe maybe six hours a day. So out of the smaller battery, I'm getting at least 18 hours of um, of monitoring uh, and some talking. Probably a 10% uh, duty cycle, not even that. And uh, it works great. Charge it up and, uh, and no problems there. It supports multiple radio IDs, so when you get into DMR, you have to register your um, call sign and your radio, and then you get a, a digital ID, and you can put, I think it's up to eight into this radio, um, so that way if you want to lend it to somebody, you can just have them switch their ID without reprogramming the entire radio and just use it that way. It does ship with some reasonable documentation. Um, it's starting to get a little bit dated. I don't believe it uh, when they release the firmware updates. I think the original documentation has uh, stayed the same. But um, it's written pretty well. It's, uh, I, I was able to, to read it and get the radio working with a few hours of, uh, of actually getting it. And that was my first experience with the digital radio. Um, this uh, radio can be used as a forward repeater, which is, which is kind of nice. I've never done that, but, but you can do that. But it was less than $200, uh, which was where, where my price range was. Now I will say that when I bought this, I think I paid $179 for it. You know, I got ended up getting two extra antennas, so that's probably 50 bucks right there. So we're looking at like 225. Um, and then I had to buy <laughs> had to buy a hotspot because I was having difficulty being able to reliably hit repeaters close to my house. And the hotspot was around 125 bucks. So you know, when you start to take a look at that, it's you know somewhere just under 400 dollars was the cost of entry for me to get into DMR, which, uh, being honest, uh, at the time, if you told me it was going to be 400 bucks, I might have passed. I might not have bought a DMR radio. You know, in retrospect, if I'm, I'm very happy that I, that I have. Um, DMR is probably my primary mode of uh, ham radio usage. Um, <clears throat> the CPS works reasonably well. Uh, and it has, uh, the radio comes with a promiscuous mode or digital mode, and so that way if I'm listening on a frequency and my channel is programmed for like a particular talk group uh, and a particular time slot, I can set promiscuous mode so I can monitor any talk group on that time slot. And then I, I think it's called double digi mode where I can actually set it to monitor both time slots. So any transmission that comes along in that frequency, I can pick it up and that's really handy. Um, also, you can use that capability in addition to scanning to be able to use this as a DMR scanner. Uh, it does scan slow because it's not a scanner. It's a ham radio, but uh, it's just kind of fun to play around with. There's there's a little bit of bad and everything. And uh, so anyhow, with this radio, when I was using it, it would make a very loud popping or clicking noise when I was talking on two meter uh, repeaters, and it drove me bonkers. I was very unhappy with it. I was like, hey, this radio is getting boxed up. It's getting sent back to the manufacturer. It w it was uh, it, like I said, it, it drove me crazy. And so we did some troubleshooting, and you know some folks were like, "Oh, it's the uh, it's the clock, it's the GPS." And so we, when I use a radio now, I don't use the clock; I, ha I have it hidden, but I could still hear it. Um, and then I also generally don't use a GPS, the the GPS because the APRS capability on this radio is not very advanced. Um, so I just I, and I just use it with like like I would a regular radio, but I don't have a, the clock displayed. In subsequent um, firmware updates. I don't hear the popping and clicking noise anymore, even if I do put the clock back. So that's been fixed, uh, but I did want to list it on here as a bad because it, at first it was a terrible experience. Um, there's no squelch knob, and uh, you know I like squelch knobs. Maybe I'm an old old man, an old school guy. Um, to adjust the squelch, I have to go into a menu system, uh, which really isn't that big of a deal. But like uh, on my FT60, I love the squelch knob. Um, inconsistent terminology. So in the CPS, a certain, a certain field or function will be called one thing, and then on the radio, it's called something else. Uh, and I find that confusing, and I think normal people would. Um, so I just, it, it's something that I would like to see, uh, see, see corrected. Um, I have a male SMA connector. So on the radio, uh, and I'll roll in a picture, the, the, the connector is a male SMA connector. And I'd, I'd just rather that not be the case. I'd rather the male end be on the antenna. In the event that that little pin snaps off, uh, an antenna is cheap to replace. Um, the radio might be expensive to repair. You have to charge this in a cradle. Uh, I would really like to have the ability to just plug a cable, USB cable, into this radio and charge it like I do my cell phone. Um, no, one day radios will get there, but it's, that day is not today. The VHF two meter sensitivity. Uh, I think we talked about that a little bit earlier on when I compared it to the uh, to the AC radio. Um, this is the big one for me is, is a limited user community. Uh, the radio is not 
not very popular. There's not a lot of them out there. Uh, there, there are some smaller user communities. Like I said, there's, there's almost nothing on Facebook about the radio. Um, there's uh, almost nothing on uh, YouTube about the radio. So, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. It, it would be nice if there were other folks using it that, that you could talk to, but it just, it just doesn't seem to be a, a – it's a popular radio. Don't, don't get me wrong. Like, they sold out of them on Amazon and stuff like that. But uh, when you listen on DMR, you know, people are like, oh, I've got the Radio Oddity, or I've got the Anytone, or I've got uh, the iLunes, or I've got a Redivis, a Retivis, I'm not sure how you say it. But um, anyhow, you know, it just is what it is. Um, another thing that drives me crazy is there's no tabs in the computer software, uh, the computer programming software, CPS. Like in Chirp, I can have multiple tabs open, each one for a different configuration for the same radio, and I can cut and paste between them. There, there's just one one interface per radio uh, when you when you're using the software, and that's a little bit of a pain. I have no built-in APRS on on uh, on analog. Maybe that'll come one day uh, with a firmware update. Maybe not. And then the APRS is somewhat limited. Uh, the functionality just isn't like you, you you can do things like message, and you can and you can beacon out your location, but it doesn't. When I use APRS Droid, which is much more feature-rich than the APRS function on this radio, to me it's it's not worth using. I just plug it into my to my tablet if I need to do APRS. Um, and this is a big one. It's a battery charging failure, and I did a video on this. I had this radio charging, and I went in the other room, and I could smell burning plastic, and I came back, and the radio was so hot I could barely pick it up. Uh, and when I did, I noticed that the charging cradle had started to melt in the middle, and so I quickly unplugged it disconnected the battery. Um, the battery was totally dead. It wasn't totally dead when I put it on the cradle. Um, so whatever happened, the battery got so hot that it died. Uh, and I was really upset. And I was like, oh no, because you know, I'm not going to have the radio for a couple days. I, I, I reached out to uh, BTEC support who were fantastic. They uh, FedExed me out a new battery and a new charging cradle within, uh, you know, they, they, they responded to me. It was like 40 minutes. And um, two days later, I, ha I had the new stuff at my house, which was great. Um, the charging cradle says any tone on it. So it's just kind of funny because a lot of people are like, it's not an any tone, but uh, the charging cradle uh, does have that. Anyhow, uh, final thoughts. Um, I say buy it. DMR is cool. Um, this is a great radio. It works fantastic for me. I couldn't be happier with it. Um, you should plan on getting a DMR hotspot, whether that's a jumbo spot, an open spot, a zoom spot, commander spot. There, there's tons of them out there. Uh, but what's handy is, is that I can take my hotspot and plug it into the dash of my, of my Jeep and, uh, you know, drive around the work or drive, to, you know, work my buddy's house. And I can just talk on my handheld just the same as I would if I was at my house or was outside a repeater. Um, plus with the hotspots, I can kind of control what talk groups I want to listen to or talk on. Uh, I don't have to be at the mercy of a repeater owner. So maybe if I'm keying up, let, let's just say that, uh, you know, I grew up in Southern California and let's just say now that I'm in Texas, right? And so I want to constantly talk to my buddies in Southern California on, on the, on the SoCal, uh, talk group, you know, the, the, the repeater owner in Texas might get a little twisted about that and, and say, Hey, you know, you can't, you can't do that with a hotspot. I can talk on any that I want. I can, I can monitor European talk groups, for example. Um, and it's not a problem. So the, the spot really enriches the DMR experience. And again, um, BTEC vendor support uh, were so responsive, so nice uh, to me. Um, they followed up with me after I had gotten everything just to make sure I was okay, uh, to make sure that I got what I needed and it was working okay. Uh, I was really impressed. I hadn't had a, a vendor support experience like that with any other uh, radio manufacturer. So I did want to give them, despite the failure, I did want to give them a shout out. Anyhow, if you have any uh, questions or comments, post them below. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. Um, and hanging in there. I think this is a little bit of a longer one. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate it.